Dave, it's good to be back, isn't it? Fantastic to be back playing rugby at the Rec, having a finals day for the uh, CRFU. Main Cups and Arsenal versus Launceston, and then we've had three other Cups which have involved uh, Bobmin beating Illogan Park. Behind us now we've got St Ives playing against Lang Kelly Foy, a great game going really well. And originally this morning we had uh, St Just play Perrinporth, which went St Just way. So yeah, it's a fantastic day and the sun's come out. <laughs> Do you want to say thanks to St Austell Brewery, Dave, because they, they put a lot into this, don't they? I, I, I have to say thanks to St Austell Brewery. Not only do they back this day, which is absolutely amazing, to a tune of quite a bit of money, but they also bank the county, obviously, back the county, obviously. So, f from everyone's point of view, huge thank you to St Austell Brewery, and go out there and buy some tribute. And you've got another big game coming up. So, so the fantastic news is we are actually being asked to be involved in the Crochet's 150 years celebration. So on the 30th of a uh, what month? Are we in? April. April. Sorry, yeah. 30th of April, we will be we will be watching uh, a Cornwall um, um, side against Crochet's Captain Crochet's Welsh 15 down at Camborne. So please come along and support us. Fantastic day for Cornish rugby. Right, Carl, nice to be back at Red Roof. Yeah, lovely to be back. Finals day and um, yeah. The top weather's come good and it'll be a good day for Cornish rugby. So also had a good season haven't they and uh, really looking forward to what is going to be a big final today. Yeah absolutely, uh, lovely, we spoke in the week, you don't get many opportunities in rugby careers to actually win a piece of silverware so excellent to be uh, be in the mix for it today. Now Lawson as you know, will play a league above you, does that make you underdogs today? Um, I think it would be, yeah I think that's fair to say. Um, at the same time, we, we know we're pushing at the top of the league we're in and I don't think Launceston will underestimate us in any way. So we need to go out there and just try and put a performance together that we're proud of and hopefully that will mean we're in the mix come the 80th minute. OK, thank you, Carl. Best of luck today. Cheers, thank you. Right, here we go. Chris Ashwin to get us underway. Sorry, Jago got there with the ball. Uh, you can see I've got proper noisy interference from the referee's mic, so I'm going to leave him turned down for a little while. That's Cab Boyer. Gives it some welly, but it doesn't find touch. There's Dan Pierce, makes an to player, what a guy with big wheels. Finds James Tucker and the ball goes back to the forwards. Tucker there by number one, Brandon Hack. Attempted a counter up there, but Alan Collins decides to go to the air. Oh, pretty much straight up. And James Tucker gets there first, but he knocks it backwards and launches to retain the ball. No, they do not. It's been turned over. And there's CJ Boyce borrowing like some sort of demented ferret. Looks right, then left. Goes to Chris Ashwin, who chips. Try to find his winger, which he does. Now Max Bullen sort of drops it, chips ahead and the ball goes dead. Take a restart. Down as far as Fraser Nottle has a first chance to show his paces, but he's met by uh, Dan Pierce there. Thanks for the smooth side so far. 
the willingness to run the ball. And you can see the referees penalising, I don't know who it was. Uh, looks like it may be Charlie Nicholson for sealing off. So James Tyke will have a chance to gain a bit of ground. No, he gives it to Dan Pierce. Bullet. I think he's known as Fred colloquially, locally. Lovely take there off the top by Tom Bottoms. And Launson the use their big forwards to get them all moving forward. It's uh, such an important part of today's game. Also need to get round and stop them. Without collapsing, it's an automatic penalty if that's the case. Ryan Western, very experienced. Now 37, but you wouldn't know it. Uh, once again, the referees, um, Ollie, Ollie Parsons says, no, getting the ball, get away from there. So it's another penalty. And launch the side, they will take a chance for early points. like uh, Dan Pierce has a kitchen duties today. Give him half a chance and uh, he was giving you he's a uh, very very fast player. Real gas and he's also a lovely kicker. So Dan Pierce after just nine minutes puts Launson into the lead. Three points to nil. Chris Ashburn to restart. Ball hangs in the breeze. But it's taken very well by Tom Bottoms. Launson look to run out of defence, but um, uh, caught in possession, although they've kept hold of it. Always a risk. But I think one of those things, isn't it? Faint heart, never read a fair lady. <laughs> Kicks, but as far as um, as uh, Carl Marriott, who's going to have a look, but he goes back to Cav Boyer, who steps the first man. Well caught by Fred Bullock there. Sorry, it's, um, there's Matt Shepard, and supported by Charlie Nick, keeps the ball well. As Max Bullock gets an, an early opportunity. I do have to apologise, I, uh, I really haven't got, I'll have to wait till I try and get to a cleaner feed from the referee. Still, still have a chance to run, Matt Shepard goes wide to Cab Boyer, but he gets man and ball. There's Kyle Marriott, next Red Reef player of course. Oh, you can see there, there's a bit of lazy running. Uh, so Matt Shepard has a chance to uh, get down there and offside says the ref. Holly Parsons. Uh, and just to guess that Carl Marriott might decide, or sorry, might decide to uh, level things up and give Matt Shepard a chance to have a kick. Which I think he is. No, he's going for the corner. Next 
So, Hellfire Corner, first opportunity. Uh, and the newer place to go to for this is probably to that man there. No, he didn't, I beg your pardon. He wants Manchester United over the top, so also looking to get them all moving. If they truly do. You can see that uh, that's collapsed, Pepe playing advantage. And CJ Boys trying to find Chris Ashwin, but uh, unable to do so, so he's going to bring him back. And I think the ref might be having a looking at a card here. He's having a chat with Lloyd Chute, the skipper. There's only passes. Only 22, but a very good referee. Uh, he's referee a good standard, one of the rising stars in Devon refereeing. So I haven't got his microphone right. I'm going to try that. So Matt Shepard's going to go for the touch again. see I'm sort of uh, struggling to get that corner in but that's the best I can do from there this time they do go to Bayern who pops it pops it and Tanos will get a roll on and it looks like they may have yeah well, what we thought was the first try of the game, so they said no, said the referee. Ball was knocked on. The referee did the right thing there, had a, uh, a chat with the touch judge, he said no as he went over. Of course, the Nostal players all celebrating prematurely. I think this might be the first scrummage of the game. One of the key areas it always is, isn't it? And there you can see the front row. Mitchell Hawkin, Levent, Levent Bullet and Andrew Knight. Solid, very solid early on. Although so still get it moving forward. And it might looks like they've turned over. CJ Boyce has a run. And no referee says penalty. It's collapsing. There you can see there quite clearly. I think CJ Boyce thought he'd scored then. So James Tucker to clear. Not too close to my liking. Lovely clearance, he must have made a good well, 25, 30, 40 metres maybe. There's referee Ollie Parsons. Hold on, time is off, time is off! Time is off. Yeah, sorry. You ready? Right, I've got him back now. Come back on. So 11 bullet to throw. Come on, Back on. Back on. Bit of clever skull dug. It worked very well. Kept the ball. And Launston attacked the three, but you can see. Indicating, yeah, in front that means uh, number two, that means he's offside. So Matt Shepard's going to go for the corner again. Cleanly by Brian. And Sonosta once again getting them all moving forward. Trading by three. Back eight. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you doing? Hey, you doing? So keep it going forward, but I think they might just have been turned over there. Yeah. There's an app on your side there.
Right, I'm hoping I might have the referee slightly better now. I've got the uh, unable to test it earlier on, but it seems to be okay. Uh, about 70 minutes played. Still 3 0 to Launceston. That's an offer with a attacking scrum. Uh, and once again, it grabs sideways and referee says, Come on, use it. That's a nice run there on the uh, Launceston number eight. Did so well to relieve the pressure. John Dorr goes wide. And I think that is uh, Sean Crawford on the wing. Penalty <laughs> Sonosco for holding on. Miles David a throw. Goes to Anthony Knight at the back and a quick talk to Carl Marriott who uh, takes on the first two men. Chris Ashman has a look, Matt Sheps, Sheps steps. Pirouettes a couple of times but he's caught there by the second row and uh, Chris Ashman once again has a little look. Up again. This time, little dummy step. Takes the man. Chris Ashby looks to go wide, but the ball couldn't be taken by Ben Plummer. Max Bolland does a bit of clearing up, keeps the ball well. That's an also look to attack again in the shape of Charlie Nick, but he's met with a black wall there. There's Chris Ashby again. He will have a chance to have a look. And Carl Marriott took the ball, but he also got absolutely flattened. Anthony Knight has a look, he's close, but he's not close enough yet. Boston still looking to get themselves on the board here. That's Shep, goes wide, goes wide to Cav Boyer. He's held, he's held. Apologies for the angle, best I can do. And uh, you can see that uh, Ryan Weston came through there, much to the annoyance of uh, one or two of the Slotal players, but he won the ball. We can't even that. What a. Did very well indeed there to, to not concede a score. Lovely play by Ryan Weston. The most experienced player on the pitch. Uh, but it will be a Sonosta line out. And Miles David throw. He goes to Vine in the middle. Lawson don't even contest. They know they're looking for recycling. Break by Ben Plum. He's got support outside with the shape of Matt Shepherd. Who scores the first try? You can look out. Look how pleased he is. Lovely little, beautiful hands there. Quickly by Chris Ashwin. Fed Ben Plummer, who had one man to beat. And he gave it to Shep to score uh, under the post. <laughs> First try of the game.
Matt Shepard to try and add the two. He duly does. I'll just read that for you. Launched in three, St. Austell seven. A really good period um, from St. Austell there. Continued pressure, great defence by Launton in the Hellfire corner, but uh, lovely but lovely hands, particularly from Chris Ashwin and Ben Plummer, put Matt Shepard in. Dan Pierce gets us back underway. Keeps it very deep. It's taken cleanly by Adam Kello. Over 300 games for Nostal now. How impressive is that? And still one of the first names on the team sheet. He goes high, but it doesn't find touch. And I think that was. Um, no, Lawson have won it. Uh, it's like Sir Oscar might have turned them over, but it's playing advantage, referee's play advantage for over the top once again. Hard to say who that was, referee not indicated. Could have been Rory Jago, he ran away, tail between his legs. So Dan Pierce will have the opportunity to gain some ground and put the ball in the far corner. And give the Chorn Lawson the chance to re regain their lead. Referee's having a word with two skippers here, with um, uh, Lloyd Duke from Launceston and Miles Davy. I'm not sure what it's about. I think it might be about the number of penalties he's had to give away for offside, so be aware of it. Tell your players, he's saying. I'm going to try and get the referee back in a few minutes' time. It's, it's uh, not working very well. I think I might have to invest in a better microphone system. This one uh, let me down. Okay, 11 bullet to throw. Just inside an officer 22, taking cleanly off the top. That's by number four, Tom Bottoms, who's uh, been a tower of strength and line out thus far. And as you can see, Launceston get the drive on. All eight forwards in there, low and driving. And they're about five, six metres out. Adam Collins looking for support left and right, but they keep moving forward. That's broken up, but they still have the ball. Real good chance here for Lawson. They've kept it. Collins goes wide. Unlucky there. Tried to hit number four, but uh, I think he knocked it on. Left his way in advantage. And you can see uh, Matt Shepard does the sensible thing, gets the ball off the park. Real opportunity for Launceston there. Little mistake. That came off Tom Bottoms actually, who's uh, caught everything thrown at him with bottom one pass. The 11 bullet to throw. And so far he's gone to Tom Bottoms twice and to Jake Crabb the other time. gone dead there but a new one arrives taken beautifully at the front by Tom Bottoms again and Launceston once again look for the rolling ball there's Levent Bullet comes back inside to Ryan Westrum difficult man to stop always makes the odds John Dore, well tackled in the centre there, I think Ben Plummer took it, the referee says once again getting the ball, this time I think it might be Matt Shepard, waves at the referee, that gives uh, Launchon the chance to uh, kick the goal if they choose to do so, now two balls on the field, a 
yeah. As you can see, um, Dan Pearce calling for a cooking tea, kicking tea. Uh, the score at seven points to three. He wants to get back within one. Dan Pierce lines up. It's not too easily. So, Slotsville 6, Lawn uh, 7, Launton 6, Chris Ashburn restarts. Adam College kicks long, but doesn't find touch. Finds Kyle Marriott, who finds Cav Boyer, who's looking to chip and chase. Get the space in behind and he gets there first. He's got support on the inside and he's got support on the outside. That's a chance for Fraser Nottle. And you can see from the referee, though, you can't see the picture that he didn't make it. Hellfire corner. Congratulated there by Miles Davis, the skipper, but uh, so close, but lovely cover tackle. Uh, by Tom Sandercott, the fullback. Lawrence and go to the front in the shape of uh, Tom Bottoms again. And once again, they're happy to play rolling more because you know it's so difficult to defend. Well, so 11 bullet to throw. Now, big pardon. Dan. Uh, Miles Davy throws. It goes to Mark Vyan. And see your boys looking, looking to go himself. Finds Adam Kello. He'll do one thing. He'll take him on and he'll keep the ball. He always does. And you can see there that Andrew Knight, lovely big tackle by him. He got himself on the wrong side though. And Tom Bottom runs away with it, but he knew full well. Yeah, handing on the ground. Now I'm afraid I've lost the referee completely now, so we're going to have to do without that. That's a shame. So, Matt Shepherd. I have a limited view of Hellfire Corner. Do the best I can from here. Bayern takes cleanly. So not still do like launches and go for the rolling more. As you can see, you've got to get round and defend that. If you bring it down, you're going to concede a penalty. Ben Plummer adds his considerable weight. That's five metres out. Crabbing sideways. Can also keep the ball, keep the ball, keep the ball. Goes down, referee's playing advantage. That gives CJ Boss the opportunity. Now here's an opportunity. What will Sinostro do here? So far they've played an attacking game, gone to the corner. And as you can see, the referee's having a chat. Uh, with with Lloyd Jute, Launson Skipper. 
and there'll be a slight delay for an injury to one of the Sonostal players. Hard to see who that is. Looks like it could be Carl Marriott, who's uh, rubbing his shoulder. Let's, let's hope that uh, he's OK, because they certainly cannot do without him. Really has uh, been a massive influence on the club since he arrived as player coach three seasons ago. Um, very popular with uh, the players, the fans and the club officials. Of course, ex Cornwall captain, ex Red Ruth and um, Pirates player. Let's hope he's OK. Usually just a touch of the magic sponge does it, but uh, God, one of those guys who doesn't stay down unless he's hurt. <coughs> he's OK. What will Matt Shep do here? I think Miles Davies said, uh, take the points please. PA score moves on to Launchton six, Sonostal ten. Adam Kello takes very well indeed under lots of pressure. With lots of experience of that. Sorry, it was Carl Marriott. Pass to Adam Kello. Made the hard yards. Chris Ashman goes wide, looks at Matt Shepherd. But he's well tackled in the centre there by John Dool. That's CJ Boyce taking the ball back from Chris Ashwin. Been a fabulous day here today. This is the fourth final. And you can see there, uh, went and then stopped. That's Sean Crawford, the right winger. Beat the first man. It's uh, one of the principal weapons that Launcher have employed at every opportunity, of course, is this rolling ball. That's Levant Bullet uh, that came away, but uh, so not have turned him over. I think it might have been Charlie Nicholson who um, stole the ball. Looks to go wide, and Chris Ashwin says, uh, not a chip, but he was blocked by John Dahl. He gives Ben Plummer the chance to have a little run. He beats the first man, he's looking for support. And you can see offside, said the ref, at the you must roll away. I think that was Charlie Tumman there. Chebs having a chat with uh, Miles Davies saying, Do you want to go for the Hellfire Corner or do you want me to kick the goal? And Miles says, Go to Hellfire Corner, Three. we'll have another go. Three. As half time approaches. still have it. CJ Boyce comes away but he's caught by Tom Bottoms there and as he was caught the ball went forward. And the ref 
referee's indicating that was a collapsed mall, so it looks like another penalty to St. Uh, which Matt Shebb is going to stick in the corner again. Too, too long on A to be taken there by Carl Marriott and Launceston we're going to have a little run Sean Crawford has a go but it's well tackled by Max Bullen and uh, Matt Shepard in support well, they've made a good 25-30 metres there Launceston want to play rugby both sides do there's Levin Bull again and it's Dan Pierce. Don't let him get away because he will he'll skin you. It's a uh, good running there by um, Charlie Tumman. Very strong, powerful runner. She attempts to close the runner down, but he uh, overdid it slightly. And Brandon Hack steals the ball. And he goes as far as Dan Pierce, who calls the mark. So, with about four, maybe five minutes to half time, Dan Pierce has a chance to clear the ball up to about halfway. Only the score is 10 points to 6 to St Hostel. Only tried by Matt Shepherd, converted by himself and added a penalty. There are two penalties to Dan Pierce. Miles David Rowe. Goes to Carl Marriott in the middle. That's a big throw. Chris Ashman does very well to hold on to it. That's um, Fraser Nottle on the wrong side, but he was turned over. Yeah, you can see that illegally, said the ref, you must release him. I suppose like a lot of modern wingers do, he's very keen, always wants to be in the place, so he's, I'm not going to stay out where I'm supposed to, I'm going to follow the ball. Matt Shepard, I think, once again looking to kick the ball into the corner. No significant advantage, I think, in terms of wind. He's gone the other way, actually. There we go. Puts um, the ball into Launceston's just inside their 22. And so Lost will have a chance, perhaps, to score again just before the half time break. Just to remind you, if you um, check out the CRFP website, you'll find details of next week's fixture, Corsair's 15, which of course Cornwall are involved in. Uh, rare event and something worth worth looking, worth supporting. As Adam Keller takes the ball off the shoulder of uh, Chris Ashwin. That's that's Max Bullen taking it well, looking it well. We're going to keep hold of the ball. Lossel picked up the pace a little bit there. Chance to have yeah, their backs have a run, but uh, it looks to be like they've been turned over. That's Fred Bullet got in there first. Stole it. And kept it. Lawson would be very keen not to concede anything just before half-time. Uh, and Adam Collins goes goes long. Only finds Max Bullen, finds Matt Shepard. He's got... Fraser Knockle and Ben Plummer but he's looking for he needs support he hasn't guess he has got it he's got it in, uh, must will keep the ball and they're looking to go wide again and there's Adam Kello stopped by Ryan Western and you can see Ben Plummer is receiving attention uh, and uh, I think Sadosk have kept it 
TJ Boyce to go wide. Finds Charlie Nick. Gets man and ball. Lloyd Jute gets in there. Chris Ashwin decides. I'll try and find Max Bullen. He certainly does. The referee's indicating an advantage. And I think he might be showing a Launceston player a yellow card. Yep, he is. But clearly for offside. I'm not sure who that is. It could be Jake Crabb, actually. Big second row. He's uh, had a good game so far. There he is looking disconsolate. But the referee had warned uh, both captains earlier on that the battle of offside, penalties are offside, is um, far too many. And to my left, just out of shot, we can't see at the moment. Uh, referee's going back to Lloyd Duke, but uh, you can see just down here, Ben Plummer is receiving attention for uh, an injury. I'm sure he'll be delighted that two young ladies, uh, two young women, have uh, come to uh, sort him out. Yeah, let's hope he's okay. Yes, he is. He looks. He's strapped up and ready to go. Regular for St. Austell for what, four or five seasons, Ben. Probably the first, one of the first names on the team sheet, team sheet when it comes to picking the backs. Very strong defender. Scored a cracking try against um, top, of the valley, uh, top of the Table, True Valley, a couple of weeks ago. So here's Matt Shepherd as half time approaches. Once again, it's an also looking to take advantage of territory and maybe try and sneak a score before the half time break. But you have to give Launceston their due. They defended like demons on their line, not, not given any chance at all. They've had one opportunity to Nostal taking it. Other than that, they've been repelled. Goes to Marriott. Nostal look to get them all moving. But Launceston got all of their eight in behind and it's going nowhere at the moment. And you can see that uh, Rory Jago at number seven at the back, kept the ball. Nostal have no choice but to go. CJ Boyce goes, he's close. And I think he's given it. From where I'm standing, Ben Plummer knocked that on. The referee awarded a try. And I think it's uh, hard to know what he's doing. I think he's going to consult with his touch judge here. That would be very... I haven't had the chance to look back at it. I'm not going to. But from where I'm standing, it looked like Ben dropped the ball as he went over. Uh, but it's not up to me, it's up to the referee. And I think he's indicating that actually it is a knock-on. So he's no try awarded. Um, and James Tucker will drop out from behind the post. The story of this half has been one try to St Austell and some absolutely top draw defence from Launceston. You think St Austell should have scored perhaps on three occasions when they crossed the line and Launceston sort have of tackled so well they've kept them out. Then Plummer looks all right, and Cal Marriott seems happy now. As James Tucker hits as far as Cal Marriott. There's Ben Plummer again. But he, he gets ball, and Ryan Western takes him low. There's Adam Kello. and doesn't find his man so Shep's looking to put Max Bullen away but he gets very little opportunity puts the ball back and it may have been knocked on there nope says the ref play on there's Carl Marriott supported by Rory Jago but repelled again Miles Davy gets man and ball and as you can see as he got the man Locked the ball and he brought it back in. The referee only passes, looks at his watch. He says it's nearly half time, guys. It's to be the last play, I think. Score remains. St. Austell 10, Launceston 6. Only try the half to Matt Shepard, who's also scored uh, a penalty and the conversion to the try. Two penalties to Dan Pierce.
Currently Lawson playing with 14 men as Jake Crabb, I believe. I'm not too certain, but I think it's Jake Crabb who was in the sin bin. Uh, after being warned by the referee for offside, he was uh, took a one for the team, I think it's fair to say. Please do check out the CRFU website for details of next weekend's fixture for Chase 15. And as I look, I can see down to my left, Hugh Newt, looks like he's warming up, might be involved in the second half. Uh, I recall in the uh, cup final here four or five years ago, I think it was, when Sonostal beat Launston, uh, sorry, when Sonostal beat Wadebridge, Hugh Newt scored two cracking tries. And according to him, they were both from 50 metres out and involved three side steps and two dummies. Awesome front row, Mitchell Hawkin, Levin Bullet, and Andrew Knight against Brandon Hack, Miles Davy, and Charlie Nicholson. No one's had an edge here so far, but it's been level pegging, I think it's fair to say. Haven't been many scrums, quite a few lineouts, and as you can see, Ryan Westrom um, playing on the flank there. He's one of those guys who can play anywhere. There's Dan Pierce. Really not had a chance to show his paces so far. He's been shut down in the middle of the park by Ben Plummer once again. But he's supported there by Lloyd Duke. There's James Tucker. Goes wide. I think that's uh, John Dor, but he's taken into touch there by Rory Jago. And the referee says uh, that'll do for the first half, guys. So, as you heard from the PA there, half-time score is Launston 6, two penalties of Dan Pearce, and so Launston 10, a try, conversion and penalty to Matt Shepard. I'll be back with you just after just the half-time break. So, anyone's game, Launston 6, so it's still 10. This goes very long. Once again taken. Taken by Carl Marriott, cleared by CJ Boyce. And I think I might have some of the referee. Uh, Ollie Parsons from Devon Society. I know we're not supposed to press an opinion, but I have to say he's had a good game so far. Oh. Going on. Oh. oh, it's a lovely little inside ball, but uh, didn't uh, Matt Shepard try to come away? And he knocked it on in the tackle. And I think he's going to bring him back because no advantage game. So it'll be a Launson scrum. At the moment, I can't see <clears throat> any change to the front rows. So Mitchell Hawkin, Levent Bullet, and Andrew Knight for Launston. With Brandon Hack, Skipper Miles Davy, and Charlie Nicholson making up the front row. And the second row for St. Austell, Anthony Knight and Mark Vine. In the back row, Adam Kello, Roy Jago and Carl Marriott. Tom Bottoms and Jake Cram, the second row for um, Launston. And Jake Cram is pleased to see us rejoin after having a 10 minute respite for being offside. Back row, Lloyd Duke, Skipper, Brandon Rowley and Charlie Tumman. Although, no, I don't know, pardon, these, uh, that means that's the winger coming in because. Um, the 10 minutes for Jake Crabb are not finished yet. <laughs> 
Two scrum halves on the far side there, Adam Collins for Launceston and CJ Boyce for Sedostal. And as you can see, uh, the right winger, Sean Crawford, has come in to help in the scrummage in. Uh, and it goes down, so I think the referee's in the good playing. He was just saying no, play on. I think it looks okay. Launceston retain the ball. Andrew Knight has a little run. He's held high, I think, by Carl Marriott. And now I think the referee uh, is indicating advantage there. So Collins decides to have a little chip in. And Ben Plummer, no, Cab Boyer dots it down. But uh, the referee bring him back for a penalty for a high tackle against Carl Marriott. There's Lloyd Duke, the uh, launcher skipper. And as you can see, that's number three, that's Andrew Knight coming on. It must be a replacement. And as you can see, uh, Ryan Western taking a knock to the face. Very experienced player. Next Pirates. Cornwall. Been there, done the lot. Yeah, I'm, I have to apologise, I really don't have uh, the referee's signal very well, so I'm going to lose it, otherwise it will just interfere. Dan Pearce kicks, but he pulled it to the right, just drifted off to the right-hand side. So the score will remain 6-10, Lords and 6, last little turn. Dr. Chris Ashwin will restart. Works, of course, uh, at Trulisk. That means he's missed lots of games this season because of uh, the COVID crisis. And despite the rest of us uh, being away from it, he's looking after patients at A&E. Uh, that means he's not always available. His, uh, his wife, his partner, of course, just had a second child. Congratulations to them. Strong run by Mitchell Hawk in there. Makes the hard yards. There's his partner in crime, Andrew Knight, who bumps off Mark Vine. That's not easy to do. And Lawson decided to go wide. But once again, Ben Plummer shows his uh, defensive metal. Matt Shepard comes away with it, but he said no. He must release in the tackle. Chris Ashwin was the last one up, so maybe he was the one who was guilty. Very sharp on that today, referee. I think he sees it as job. Well, of course, it is his job to keep the game flowing and anything like not releasing or over the top, he's penalised. Which gives Dan Pierce the chance uh, to slot one, which he, he missed a moment ago <clears throat> from almost the same place. This is probably slightly more kickable to get launched and within one point of St. Austell. As you can see, big crowd on the far side, enjoying the sunshine. And Dan Pierce enjoying the breeze and the luck there. No luck involved in that, just skill. So he uh, brings Lawson back within one point. So Lawson nine, Dan Pierce nine, Stenostal ten, Matt Shepard ten. Only two scorers today, so far. There's Chris Ashwin, ready to restart. to say whether that went forward or not. The referee says not, so the ball is hoofed high. Lovely kick out of defence there. Um, touch to it says he went out right up there, so it's probably midway. Well, you can see there's the 10 metre line. Miles Davy to throw. That's uh, Mark Vine. Got a hand to it. There's Matt Shepard on the on the burst, but he's held by Ryan Westrom. Doesn't miss many of those, Ryan. Anthony and I unable to take that uh, round his ankles, but the ball went backwards as a ref. But they've been turned over, but illegally. The referee, you can see that quite clearly. Hands on the ground. In this case, it was Tom Bottoms. 
So does Matt Shepherd attempt the points? He's having a chat with his skipper. And he says, yes, please, Matt, have a go. To try and restore the four-point lead that St. Austell held at half-time. Apologies. And the tripod moved. Once again, if uh, I have got any of the Launceston names wrong, um, I do apologise to, to uh, anybody watching. It's because um, there wasn't a programme today. Because there have been four cup finals today, uh, it was too much of uh, too, too much of a well, difficult late task for the CRQ to publish a, a programme. So what they did is uh, did it all before the games, um, uh, and I didn't have uh, a side until it was announced at kickoff. So if I got their names wrong, my apologies. <clears throat> Matt Shepherd from about 30, 32, 33 metres out. Crowd go quiet. Flags go up. So Dan Pierce. Playing on the wing today due to restart. Really not had many opportunities to show his, uh, his pace. Excellent hostel boy, very popular with the lads, all know each other. Excellent hostel player, I should say. Originally from Bude, Dan. Uh, once the number eight going early, the referees just play on, no, no disadvantage. There's Dan Pierce. he steps the man and he takes off. Ben Plummer got a hand on him, CJ Boy's got another hand on him, managed to stop him. Just as well really, but uh, Launceston have done very well to keep the ball and go wide. And as you can see, ball bobbling around. James Tucker feeds his centres, but he gets man and ball there. And they've done it at Kent Brown. They've got an overlap here. Uh, that might work out for Dan Pierce if he can hold on, but it doesn't. So Max Bullen gets away. Almost, almost. Steps the first man, finds Adam Keller. He won't step anybody. He'll go straight. There's Brandon Hack bumping off the uh, Launson hooker. Apologies for that, something in the way, I couldn't come across. Charlie Nicholson just receiving attention, but he's okay. Good to see him back actually after injury. Goran Boyd, like Mr. Viant. That goes to, um, I think that's Rory Jago actually. Or was it Adam Kello? No, it wasn't Adam Kello, he was wearing a strong cap. No, it was Rory Jago in the line out, and he's come round to take the ball back from Adam Kello. You can see the referee's indicating, I think he's playing advantage here. The referee go wide and Shep gets man and ball, but recovers. John Dorr can't hold him a second time. He's still going, his young Shep. He's got men outside in the way for the fire, but on unlucky, he couldn't get the ball to graze a knock or referee will bring him back for a penalty. That's kickable. Matt Shepard kicked one from probably 10 metres infield from there but uh, he's got his kicking boots on I think he's gonna have a go again the feeling you get from both teams is because this game is so tight uh, and it really is anyone's final at this stage 
anyone's final that all the points matter. So in other days where uh, Matt Shepard may have gone for the corner and attempted to, uh, to go for a try, if there's a kicking opportunity, he's going to take it. That's a difficult kick. As you can see from here, not much of a breeze, but it's right at the post, probably 10 metres out from the centre. And I rough guess about 28 metres from the try line itself. So not easy, but Matt hasn't missed today yet. So let's have a four point advantage, 13 points to nine. Um, if he kicks this, that becomes a converted try. So Matt Shepard, where I go quiet, keeps his head down. That's another kick. Top judges look at each other. It was close, but it went over. <laughs> Significant score that because it puts an Austell a converter try in the lead. Um, we are about 15 minutes into the second half. Long way to go yet. If... Carl Marriott once again feeds CJ Boyce, but he uh, but he's caught and you can see he went behind Adam Kello, so that we're penalty. And in the interim. I think that's, um, it is, yes, it's uh, Charlie Lucasson's had a knock there. He's got to his feet, though. That presents uh, Launceston with an easy attacking opportunity. They'll love that. One of those things, it was a mistake, and I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do. They're going to have a scrummage here. Uh, I think they probably feel they have a real... Uh, a, they perhaps have an edge here, and they'll be looking to get a nudge on and keep it going. Hellfire corner. So there's Adam Collins. As I look, I see that uh, Hugh Newt has joined the fray, playing loose head. That means that Brandon Hacks probably um, left the field. There's Charlie Nicholson on there. So Hugh Newt, very experienced, try scorer in the final, of course, some five years ago, two tries. As he, I think, I think he probably remind you. Big scrummage this one. This one really matters. And nobody's got an edge on there, but Sonal Lawrence and keep the ball. Number eight picks up. Bumps off Chris Ashwin, but in the process he lost the ball. Knocked on twice, says the ref. The first one was by Launceston, so that'll be a Sonostal scrum. Lovely tackle by Chris Ashwin. It was Brandon Rowley at full tilt at him, he didn't, he didn't flinch at all. As you can see, Brandon Rowley receiving attention for that. He, he might have taken a knock in the process. He wants to have a chat with Chris, he's a doctor. Just remind you, if you uh, want to see this again, then uh, once I've had a chance to put it together, uh, I'll put it on YouTube so the whole game will be uh, available for you to watch at your leisure. And my apologies once again. I was hoping to have a referee, but my radio microphone's let me down. As I speak, Anthony Knight uh, is coming off. He'll be replaced by Zach Morley, wearing 21. That means Adam Keller will probably go into the second row, which he duly has. Uh, and Zach Morley will take a place on the flank. It's an awesome scrum put in by CJ Boyce.
Once again, a nudge on there. The ball comes out, and Matt Shepard attempts to clear, but it doesn't go the right way. In fact, it goes into touch about 10 metres out for a Launson line out. Score is still Launceston 9, St Austell 16, but one score will change this game completely. 11 bullet to throw, goes to his skipper, Lloyd Duke, and once again Launceston look to get the rolling ball moving. It's a big wrestling match, but if you don't stop it, it's very difficult to defend. As you can see, Launceston got it going forward again. He's got his arm out. I think he's playing advantage. Uh, but Lawson, keep it tight. There's uh, Mitchell Hawkins and Andrew Knight both in there. And uh, is he crossed the line? He's very close. The referee says no. And he'll bring them back for the penalty. Yeah. I'm not sure what that indicated means, but he put his hands up to say number seven. That was Rory Jago. He might have been um, slipped his binding. So James Tucker nudges it into touch and uh, Launson will look to have a line out catch and drive. This is where Sonos will look to buy into contest. He's a dab hand at stealing the odd ball. But 11 bullet so far has, uh, has gone to Tom Bottoms and Jake Crabb several times. And he flows right over the top, goes to his skipper Lloyd Duke taken very well. So also get moving but to launch and to kept the ball and over has spun it round. Unless they get round and defend it it's going to be difficult. You can see uh, uh, Mark Vines in an offside position. Referee puts his hand up. Launson desperate to get across the line about five metres out and still going forward. No advantage coming, bring him for the penalty. And I would not be surprised to see the referee put his hand in his pocket. He's talking to Miles Davy again. And I think the penalty was for coming in at the side. Discussion going on there, and unfortunately I can't hear it. Yeah, you can see that rotating the wall. So James Tucker, Red Ruth boy of course. Sticks it into touch again and launch and have another line out, attacking line out, just on the five metre line. 11 bullet to throw. Beautiful day here today. Once the clouds lifted, it's a really bright sunny day. Not much in the way of wind. And the crowd are loving it. This is the fourth final. This, of course, is the Tribute Cornwall Cup final. First time in three years. It's lovely to see. Taken by Bottoms. Launson once again looked to drive. They've got men behind the ball. 11 bullets at the back there. Uh, uh, it's so difficult. They're close, very close. So I'm still finding it very hard to do anything about that. And it looks like bullets gone over. Yeah, he does. I'm not sure it was Levitt Bullet and see who the last one up with the ball is. Yeah, I think it is. That's the hook of Levitt Bullet. Been threatening to do that all day. And launched and get back within two with a conversion to come. Relatively easy kick for Dan Pierce. You'd imagine he'd kick this, but uh, you never can tell. So, to level it up, Dan Pierce levels it up. Lawson 16, Snossel 16. And in this half, uh, the Lawson forwards have just, just, just about had an upper hand in that, and ultimately that pressure paid. Uh, that 
very effective rolling ball of theirs. Um, and the ultimate the drive was always going to come. But still got 20 minutes or so to go. Everything to play for. Anyone's game. Yeah, I think it'll come down to one bit of skill, one kick. Might be that kick. That's unlike Chris Ashwin. Um, just scuffed it as he kicked it, so they'll come back for a scrummage on the halfway line. There's Hugh Newt, we're in 22. Boat builder by trade is Hugh. Solid scrummage. Adam Collins looks and looks, and uh, I think that might have gone forward. The referee says play on. That's James Tucker, chip and chase, but only gets finds. No, he's bringing them back, I think. The referee says there's no advantage coming for an offside. No, it wasn't offside, it was a high tackle. So Dan Pierce or James Tucker will probably stick this down in the far Hellfire corner where most of this game has been played, I have to say. There's probably a bit of a slope on this pitch left to right and also on the far, so that that's the lowest point of the whole pitch. Which is probably which might explain why some of the uh, game so much of the game is played there. That's a lovely kick. There's a try scorer, 11th bullet. His chance, uh, his opportunity to throw in for an attacking Launton line out. Goes to the middle. Taken by number four, Tom Bottoms. Very well. CJ Boyce, the last line of defence there, looking, uh, looking for support and didn't find it. Uh, uh, as you can see, the referee is talking to one of the Sinatra players. And it's Carl Marriott, who's uh, taking the walk of shame. Didn't see what that was for. But Carl's certainly off in the sin bin. And Launson have an attacking line out and a real opportunity to put themselves in the lead for the second time in this game. Yeah, Launson have done it. They've won the ball. That's very close again. Pick up from Lloyd Duke. He's looking for support outside. That's Adam Collins. He supports his second row. He's very close, so they're over the line. No, they're not. They're just short of the line, so Nostal doing their best to defend it, but once they've got the ball. That's the winger, James uh, Crawford. A bit like watching Exeter of this, they get that close to the line, they go for it every single time. He's over, he's definitely over, and they've launched and win the ball back again and again. So I've still repelled them so far. It's also go wide. Dan Pierce has tackled. And that's Cab Boyer. Adam Collins attempts to dummy and go. They've kept the ball. There's James Tucker, another penalty. Another one coming for a high tackle. Looks like Ryan Weston might have got over. I think he has. Yep, yeah, and you can hear from the supporters. 
It wasn't Ryan Westshaw, I think it was that man there. Absolutely delighted. So, with 14 men's on the, of uh, players on the pitch, Sonos will go behind for the second time in this game. Um, after leading 16-9, they're now 16-21 down with a uh, conversion to come from Dan Pierce, wide on the left-hand side. Dan Pierce misses the conversion, so the score remains Launceston 21, Solostal 16. There's a referee, Holly Parsons. Very strict on uh, refereeing around the Rock and Mall today, but he's kept the game playing really well. Tails are up now for Lawnstone. Chance to run, they will too. That was number 17. I that might be Leon Cole, but I'm really not certain. Uh, there's James Tucker. Looks to go wide. He finds Dan Pierce, who's got space. And you give him a chance, he will take it. He's still going, he's still going, still going, still going. And Dan Pierce punished the North School for some poor tackling. Hi, buddy. Yeah, it is a bit noisy, but they've just scored again. Did you see that? Uh, right, uh, well, we've got like 150 odd people watching. It's working all right. Um, yeah, we just they just scored twice, so it's now, we're now 16:26 down. But I'm I'm right in the middle of doing this, buddy. Can I can I call you back later? Yeah, and Dan Pierce is just about. He just scored. Dan Pierce. He's about to attempt the conversion, so it could be. Uh, I think that might be enough because Carl Marriott's in the bin as well. All right. Okay. Ta -da. Dan Pierce converting his own try to move the score on to Launston 28, Sonostal 16. Now, Sonostal are trying, ending out this game, they've got to uh, get up again to it right now. They need to score fairly soon because uh, Launston Tails are definitely up. Two quick fire tries, two very well taken tries. Came from strength up front and a bit of pace outside. Collins goes long. Only as far as Adam Kello, who's met with. The referee brings them back, I think, for offside. So that'll give Matt Shepard a chance to uh, put some pressure by sticking the ball in the corner. And as we hear, Dan Tyrrell has come on the wing. I think that means that uh, Fraser Knockable must be off. Dan Tyrrell, of course, normally plays uh, scrum half, but he can play anywhere, to be honest. So Sonos will have a chance inside. It's uh, also looking for a way back. 12 points to drift. Davy goes to Vine. And the forwards look to get them all moving. But Launson's defence has been, I think, probably slightly had the edge today. And once again, Launson's forwards get in behind and stop them all. In fact, they turn it over.
And I have all the car drivers please do not move their car until at least 10 minutes after the final whistle. This is allowed for the safe exit of the best routes on the ground. So it'll be a launch of scrummage about 10 12 meters from their own line. They have a 12 point advantage and about 15 minutes or so, maybe slightly less to play. It's coming up to uh, 6 o'clock, of course. Kickoff was at 4 30, so it might be more like 12 minutes to play. But obviously, that man there, Ollie Parsons, he's the only watch that matters. Alan Collins puts him once again. Once again, the scrummage rotates, so the referee indicates an advantage, and Lawson decide they'll have a run from that. Playing with much more confidence now, Lawson. I think they've got stronger as this game's gone on. Happy to play in defence anywhere in the park. James Tucker, left-footed, that's a beautiful kick but I don't be sure, no, yeah, he did find touch. Slight correction, Cab Boyer has gone off, Fraser Knuckle is still on. Um, it looks like Fraser might have gone to fullback. It's a launch and line out. Eleven bullet. That's well taken at the back there, one handed. That's Brandon Rowley who's uh, had a uh, powerful game for number eight. Difficult man to stop. Over the head of Max Bullen, but he takes it and looks to attack. But he only gets as far as Lloyd Jew. Once again, they uh, get the ball wide to Dan Pierce, who show you already you give an opportunity, he'll take it with both hands. Score is still Launceston 28, St Austell 16. Two tries in the second half, two quick fire, three tries actually, but two quick fire tries within the space of two minutes took um, Launceston from a 16 9 deficit to a 12 point advantage. And that domination has really come from uh, the strength of their forwards who worked so well as a unit. And at this point in the game, they look like a side who are perhaps a league above St. Austell. Although St. Austell are not finished yet. We've seen from some of their performances this season, they are absolutely determined, will never, never say die. CJ Boyce has a look and he finds Danny Tyrrell. There's a lad who can run. I'm not sure, I think they might have been turned over there. Yeah. Alan Collins goes long, he sees the gap behind, tries to fill it, and Danny Tyrrell's there, but he's scragged by Adam Pearce. Matt Shepard comes away, well tackled. There's Hugh New, going to play scrum half, why not? Charlie Nicholson, head down. If you can play scrum half, then so can I, says Miles Davy. Feeds Adam Ke sorry, feeds Rory Jago. And Chino Boyce looks to go up the blind side. Uh, as Sack Morley steps inside, but he's caught. So I'm finding it difficult to get out of their 22 here. The uh, launch and defence has been very strong. And ultimately that forces CJ Boyce to go to the air. Now Launson looking to run back. It's James Tucker. He's the way. And he's chipped into the corner. It's going to be him. Yeah. 
for Rory Jago and I think you're pretty certain it was him. That's Lawson's fourth try. Lovely try by uh, James Tucker. I think it's James Tucker, hard to say. At this stage in the game, that might be enough for Launston. That's their fifth, fourth try. If there were bonus points, that's what they'd get for that. And with the conversion to come by Adam Pearce. Conversion by Dan Pierce moves the score on to St. Austell 16, Launson 35. I think the difference between the two teams has been really uh, Launson's defence has been absolutely outstanding this afternoon. They've been given so few chances. Carl Marriott back on the pitch. He'll have a go. He always does. Looks to go wide to Matt Shepard. Playing in the centre today, Matt. Scored all of Snossel's points. Rodrigo goes straight and um, once again that line of defence has been very powerful and you can see right there what I'm talking about CJ Boyce gets man and ball flattened Charlie Nick gets hit hard by Brandon Rowley no way through there and they're looking for a bit of uh, there's Mark Ryan on the bus looking for a bit of something a bit clever a bit of skill a bit of pace maybe Chris Ashman's often the man to do that there's Max pulling away and he steps one Stays on his feet. He's still going. He's looking to, looking to uh, show a bit of pride. They've had a very, very impressive season. There's Ashwin. Inside, inside. And the ball was stolen as he passed it. Otherwise, I think uh, Ben Plummer would have been in. And they're going to go back for um, an offence. Not sure what this is for, but uh, referee Ollie Parsons has got his hat on his knees. Yeah, it looks to me like he might be injured. He's had a very, very good game. You can see that I think maybe he took a knock from a player going by. He's got the physio on. But he's only a youngster, I'm sure he'll be okay. Offsides as ref, so Matt Shepard will put it in the corner and St. Oslo will attempt to make the score a little more respectable. Big mountain to climb this late in the game. Taking my Marriott at the back. I've got them all going forward and they want to keep it going forward but once again Launce's defence has been solid and CJ Boyce looks right and right and he's looking for support steps back inside scores himself 
Nice try, boom. CJ boys. There's John Woodsy playing ball boy today. He's somebody that uh, Sonos have missed his pace. Matt Shepard attempts a conversion. Slots it. So Sonos are not finished yet. Score is 23-35 and there uh, must be... Well, the game's almost, um, I reckon, three or four minutes, but... Um, it's only uh, Ollie Parsons' watch that matters. Morgan sitting on a significant advantage as skipper Miles Davy comes off. And Archie rolls. Matt Shepard looks to put away There's Dan Pierce again Probably the last man you want to kick the ball to At this point, uh, I think both sides have emptied their benches and uh, I'm not going to speculate on names and numbers, so I'm just going to say number 17. Well, that is James Tucker, who looked like he lost it, but held on to it very well. If he says play on. And Tucker puts it into touch. And that is it. Launston Launston have won the Tribute Cornwall Cup Final 2022. Final score is Celestial 29 23, Launston 35. Well, the way around, actually. Congratulations Launceston, I think it's fair to say they were probably the best team on the day, I can argue with that. Uh, their defence was outstanding and they took their chances very well, particularly in the second half. So not still who play in a league below, had a real opportunity to show how how well they can contest with uh, sides from a higher, higher league and they did themselves proud today. I think uh, they showed but right at the end there, they never gave up against a very good Lawson side. Lots of boys coming through there, led by Skipper Miles Davy. They've still got to raise themselves one more time. Big league game next week. Denport services at home <coughs> to decide 
if or if they will go up into level five uh, or not next season. They've had a great season, fourth in the league, everything to play for. And they certainly did themselves proud today against a very good launching team. that Sierra Pew awarded man of the match award to Dan Pierce but I think really well deserved actually fine game so congratulations to Cornwall to uh, Launceston Cornwall Cup winners 2022 and there's the skipper Lloyd Duke about to do something he'll never forget in a very long time It's an hostel, very dignified in, in defeat, applauding the opposition, super game. Launton are the um, tribute Cornwall Cup final winners 2022. Thank you for joining us uh, and if you're uh, enjoying what we've done today please go tune in again next week where St Austell will be playing against Devonport Services, 3 o'clock kickoff on the same channel. Thank you to all.